if anybody comes in later, they'll just, um, you know, I'll just catch them up. All right, so PBS Rewards, what it is, is it's a, it's a computer-based or app-based platform that you can use to acknowledge students. Now, PBIS Rewards does not take the place of PBIS. It's just a part of our PBIS implementation. So PBIS has um, several different critical elements, and one of the critical elements is the acknowledgement piece. So for Newton County, we have chosen PBS Rewards to be the tool that we use to help staff acknowledge students. So PBS Rewards, it honestly does a lot. Um, but mainly we use it for its acknowledgement piece. So for <clears throat> I'm acknowledging students, giving them um, like Middle Ridge, they use a Mustang buck. So giving them bucks, um, different schools call their points, different things. Um, I know at Clements, I think once we started PBS Rewards, they started just calling them um, PBIS points, um, but different schools call them different things. So you can access PBIS Rewards using the Launchpad. So when you go to um, the class links, my Launchpad, PBIS Rewards is an icon that is there um, for all of our PBIS schools. They were supposed to, technology was supposed to have it to where it would work today. It may not be quite working yet. When you go to the platform, it may say like, put in your student ID, your teacher ID, I think it's called, and a school code. But if you're at one of those PBIS buildings, you can just hit skip and it is supposed to work. Now I have heard that for some of the new teachers, it's not working. If you just send me an email at harris.jessica and let me know that it's not working, I will get with Misty Smith, our technology integration specialist, to do her magic behind the scenes so that you can log in. But it is a single sign-on through the My Launchpad. Um, the app setup is a little bit different, and I'll talk about that um, in a moment, or, or kind of toward the end. So basically, when you log in to PBIS Rewards, this is the, the login screen that you see. You'll see the stars. So basically, teachers are acknowledged for using the platform. So when you log in, you receive a star. When you acknowledge a student, you receive a star. And when you acknowledge an entire group, you see a star. And I'll tell you about the groups um, shortly. Here you have your name. So you'll see here that this is teacher training. This is an account that I created for teacher training. Um, you can change or tweak your information. You can upload a photo. If you don't want the PBS Rewards icon, you can have a photo there. My setting, um, I am set up as a district user so I can switch, switch schools. Some of you that maybe work at multiple schools, you may see that switch school feature as well and you can sign out. Um, the envelope up here at the top, that is if you're, um, it, you can send messages to each other through the system. Um, district level personnel can send messages to a whole school through the system. And also parents can send messages through the system. If, if you've received a message, it's going to show up at this envelope right here. It'll have like however many messages you have. It'll have like a one, a two, or a three, whatever, however many messages you've received, it will show up right here in this envelope. Here is where you can get help. PBS Rewards has tons of tutorials that you can access. So if you select help, it will open a new browser window. And in that browser window, you can type in, like say you want help on how to acknowledge um, a student or how to set up your score can go on there and you can um, click in any of the tutorials that they have. They have videos, they have just tutorials that have screenshots that show you how to do everything. So on this main page, you're going to see where you can acknowledge a student. You're going to see the stars that you've received. You're going to see your groups. So PBS Rewards uses ClassLink, so your rosters are automatically going to sync to PBIS Rewards. So here you'll see that I have favorited um, Miss uh, Gourlay's group here at Middle Ridge. So her students, if her roster was live, would show up automatically in this. 
Now, you may not see your roster until the first day of school. Um, hopefully, they'll be live soon, but just like we can access this in class links, the kids can access it if they go through my launch pad. So all of the rosters are not live yet. It will also show you your last um, three or four days of giving out points. So you'll see here on Friday, I did a training. So I acknowledged seven test students. So you'll see your usage of the program here for the last five days. You'll also on this page see the school store and your store. So that's all that's on the homepage. I'm gonna be honest, as a teacher, I didn't utilize the homepage very often because it only allows you to acknowledge one student. So here, if I were to test, um, type in a student's name, if you type in the first three um, letter combination of either their first or last name, students are gonna pre-populate just to make it easier for you to find the student you're looking to acknowledge. So let's say I wanted to acknowledge test student one. I just select, select test student one. They made good choices. So I select making good choice. Um, you can put a comment in, it's optional. Typically just for speed, I don't put in a comment, but you can put in one if you choose. And then you hit the reward one and it would give the student a point. You'll also see here, where I typed in test student one, it told me they had a current balance of seven points and they completed an SEL check, which I'll show you that in a minute when I get to the group feature. So basically an SEL check is just a social emotional learning check. And that's where you as a staff member or the students themselves can go in and say how they're feeling, whether they're angry, whether they're calm. Different schools have different options for the kids to select, but um, during the testing that I, the training I did on Friday, I said that this student was angry and that check was completed three days ago. So I can hit this blue, it's hyperlinked, and it tells me, okay, they were angry, it was three days ago. I can do another check. So let's say that he came in calm. I could put a comment. Student entered happy and hit submit. Now, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. So now I just submitted another SEL check on the student. One of the uses that I find that's very good for this is like if I'm, I have a student and I'm thinking of moving that student up in the tiers, like I'm thinking they may need tier two supports. I might start doing SEL checks on that student and collecting data. That way, when I go to that tier meeting, I can pull a report off of this and show, okay, on Monday he came in happy, but on Tuesday the student came in mad. Um, when we talked, this is what was going on, or he threw chairs, or, or you can kind of put some anecdotal notes in there when you go to your tier two or tier three meetings. So that would be one thing that I find is very helpful. Some schools have the SEL check turned on so that students can complete SEL checks. It is really neat because the admin of the program can set up teams. So let's say that a student were to select an option that says, I need to talk to an adult. Then a group of staff within the building would be notified, hey, this student may need to be checked on. He needs to talk to an adult. So there, there are different ways that the SEL check is utilized in some of the buildings. Some utilize it very frequently and some don't utilize it very much. I know on Rise Academy, um, they use it and their kids do it every day as soon as they come in. And that's just a way for the staff to gauge how their students are entering um, the classrooms, if they're in a good mood, if they're you know, not feeling well. So it can be a very useful tool. Um, so that's it for the homepage. So basically what I'm going to go through is I'm going to go through all of this main menu and let you know what the features are that you're going to see. So next is the group session, the, the group main menu. So basically, like I said, all of your students are going to be automatically hooked to you through class links. 
When you get new students, do not enter new students into the program. The students, it may take because the program sinks overnight. So if they're enrolled on Monday, you not, might not see them until Wednesday or Thursday. But before the end of that week, that student should be synced through the class links um, information that's being shared with PBIS Rewards. So do not add new students because when you add new students and then they sync, then that child will technically have two accounts. So don't, don't do that. Just wait for them to come on through class links. So with your groups, your groups are gonna be named whatever they're named in Infinite Campus. So they're gonna be named sometimes some weird things because it's gonna be whatever the identifier is in Infinite Campus. Um, you can create groups and you can change your order of the group. So let's say that I want my groups in order from first period to my seventh period. You can go in and click change order. And here you can, you know, change which way your groups are going to be appearing in your list and then just hit save. So that's a new feature from the program this year. If you want to create a group, the only thing you have to do is anytime you typically see like a pencil or you see a um, plus or green or blue, that means that you can select it. So you could select a group. I'm going to add a test group two. We're going to be teaching mathematics. I am a co-teacher, so I need to add the teacher that I'm working with. So um, in your building, you just type in the first couple of letters and the teachers in your building or staff in your building that match that combo are gonna pop up. So I just added Heather Hodge as my co-teacher. Um, if you have a, a para support, you could add paras to your, as your owner um, as well. So that way it's gonna show up on their groups page as well. So technically two people don't have to create the same group. One person can create it and it's kind of like sharing it. Click save, so now my group is created. So now to add students, I'm gonna hit the plus, and basically I'm just going to type in students' names. Here I just added test student one. I added test student one, test student three, so just by putting in there the first couple of letters of their names, you can add students. So for me, when I was teaching elementary school, I did this a lot because I did daily five. So I had different groups that I saw on different days of the week or they rotated through me. And I would create groups based on my daily five groups or the groups that I um, was doing working with. So you can name them whatever you want. You can add an image. So if I just wanted to add an image, I, it opens up my, um, your pictures. So here, let's say that I'm gonna use an apple for this group. And then it'll change your picture. Um, you can also change some settings. So I'm just gonna save this group. So now you'll see here that I can select both of these students. The program, the internet is running very slow today. Both of these students are making good choices and I can hit reward one. And now both of those students are gonna be receiving points. So, um, and, and its tone will chime when you acknowledge the students. You can also select all the students at one time and acknowledge them that way. You can toggle presence, which is like taking attendance in the program, but it doesn't talk to Infinite Campus. So it doesn't take it for anything else just for the sake of the program. So let's say that test student is not here today. So I'm gonna hit toggle presence. And now it says that they're not present. So now when I select all, it's gonna select just the students that are there, not test student one. So that way you're not acknowledging somebody who's not even in the room. Then if that person were to come in, I would just select them again and hit toggle presence again. And now they reappear again. So now I can acknowledge them points. 
I can complete SEL checks on the group tab. So let's say that I wanted to do an SEL check on student three. I submit SEL check. They're stressed. They forgot their homework. Submit. Yes, I want to submit it. So now that SEL check was just submitted for them. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen where you're trying to select on kids and you're like, man, I feel like I select the same student every time to ask them questions. If you come in and you select all your students and hit random, then it gives you a student that you can select and answer, ask your questions. Um, so, hey, test student number three, could you tell me what, you know, what did you learn last night during your reading? Um, you just have to have all the students selected. Then every time you hit random, it's going to call on another student. So it's just another way to kind of make sure that you're, you know, being fair when you're calling on kids. So some teachers use it for that. You can also do an authorization code. So if the kids are using their Chromebook, they will have PBS rewards on their launch pad so they can access the app just using their single sign-in. But let's say that the kids have downloaded it to their personal electronic device. So they've downloaded the student app on their phone and they wanna be able to use their phone to access the app. You can give them an authorization code. So let's say I wanna give test student one an authorization code so that they can use their personal electronic device to access the program. So I would select the student and I would hit off. Here at the top, it's, they're gonna get an individual code so now you're going to generate, select the time frame. Let's say I want to give them 10 minutes. The code's only going to be good for 10 minutes. It's an individual student. So I'm going to select test student one and now generate code. So now they can come up and scan this code with their electronic device, or they can just write it down. And this code they could then use to authorize their app on their personal electronic device. You can also change the settings of the app, of, of, of the program. So let's say you want to edit the group. Okay, test student three, they've moved. They're no longer in my class. I'm going to just hit the X and delete that student. So now they're, they're gone. Just make sure that you save your changes. You can also do options, which kind of rearranges if you want them bigger, do you want them smaller? Um, do you need your tone lou louder or softer? Do you need to sort your students based on first name or um, last name? You can change those in the settings. And you can also manage your point sound. You can go in and you can um, download sound files. They have to be MP3s and save those to your computer, and then you can upload them into the program. So let's say you want a dinosaur roar, or you want a bell, you can go in and you can manage the point sound that, that um, when you acknowledge a student, it has a different tone. With the groups tab, I also use this a lot if I am opening my store and I'm letting my student shop. If I want more than one student to be able to shop, I go up here to menu. Everything at the top is for the individual teacher. Everything on the bottom under the gray line is for the school. So school store, school event, school raffles, my store, my events, and my raffles. So I created a store. I had a few items. Oh, I think I created it on another page, um, on another login. Um, anything that I put in my store would show up right here. And then I could check out multiple students under this section. Otherwise, you'll have to check out kids one at a time. And so this will allow you to check out multiple students for your items. Um, you can also go in and you can favorite other teachers groups. So let's say that my class goes to lunch with Ms. Gourlay's class and I wanna favorite her group. You would just go down here and find the group. So let's say that I go to lunch with our, um, I'm in the cafeteria the same time as Michelle Brown's homeroom and I just hit the star and now Michelle Brown's group is gonna show up at the top where my group is.
you'll see that if it's your own group, you don't have a star. You can't favorite your own group, but you can favorite someone else's group. Well, now my lunch schedule's changed and I don't go to lunch with Michelle Brown's class anymore. So I just come up here and hit the star again. And now Michelle Brown's group is no longer with mine. So like I said, through class links, all of your rosters will automatically appear. But if you want to favorite someone else's, you just go down here to the all user groups and find that teacher's group that you want to go, you want to connect with and hit the orange star and you'll favorite them and they'll show up at the top. If, um, if you have any questions, please feel free to type them in the chat. I will be checking those. Um, if you have a question too, feel free to unmute yourself and ask. I know this is a lot of information, but PBS Rewards can do a lot. And I wanted to at least show you the things that it could do. So that's the group feature. And honestly, as a classroom teacher, I utilize the group feature the most. Another thing that you can do with the group feature um, that I want to talk to you about because I did it a lot in my room. Um, to me, when I'm teaching and I'm walking around and I'm observing my students, the, the desktop portal wasn't always my favorite option. I utilized the app on my mobile phone the most. Um, and what I would do is I would print this group here. So under settings, you go to group print. So basically all of your students, it will print a PDF or it will, it will produce a PDF that you can then print and hang it around your room. So here, if I wanted to acknowledge my whole class, I would use this QR code at the top for me to scan with my app. If I wanted to just acknowledge a single student, all of your students will be listed here and you can scan the QR code for an individual student. I had those posted around my room and that just made it easy for me to be able to acknowledge my students as I was teaching. I would just pull out my phone, I would have my app open, I would scan their QR code and you know just tell, hey, test student number one, I really like how you're making good choices, how you're on task right now. I really appreciate that. I'm giving you a PBS rewards point. And that would be what I did as I was teaching. Any questions so far? So Yolanda's asking if I have a cheat sheet. Honestly, Yolanda, I do not have a cheat sheet to summarize this because it is so much. Mm -hmm. Honestly, the best thing for you to do if you forget how to acknowledge a student or if you forget how to create a store is truly go to this help tab and they have tons of tutorials where it, it lists every single thing concerning PBS rewards and how to, how to utilize it. So that would be my go-to um, is using this help and opening up the separate window and you just literally type in whatever it is that you're having a problem with. Any other questions? Okay. So the next um, tab is the My Activity. Basically, it just tells you what you've done. So I've, I acknowledged a group. I acknowledged an individual student. It just tells you what you've done and you can go back to dates. Honestly, I didn't utilize my activity a lot when I was a classroom teacher. The My Store feature is, is really important. So here you have um, in Middle Ridge, one of their teachers has a public store. Now, I typically had my store set on private because when it's public, that means other kids that aren't in your groups can access that store. And I always wanted just my kids to be able to access my, my store. So I set my store to private. So the Mustang Market is their school store. So you can see the items that are listed here in the, in the Mustang Market. My store is what I utilize. Now I'm gonna be honest, I have four kids at home. So I looked for anything that I could put in there that was free. So I did a lot of like privileges, sit with a friend at lunch, um, a homework pass, um, drop the lowest classroom grade, 
um, sit in my Roby chair, be the teacher for the day. I would, you know, be the line leader. I put in a lot of stuff that was more like privileges. But let me tell you, I'm also one for a deal. So if I went to Walmart and I found something on clearance that was really cheap, I would also add that to my store. So I, I would try to find things that I could utilize that were free. Um, I would try to find things that, you know, were really inexpensive. So here's how you create your store. So the first thing you're going to want to do is um, this is how you customize it. So the name of your store. This is where you customize the visibility, whether it's private or public, and hit save. So here under the options, um, you can display your, change your display sizes, and you can sort your items A to Z. You can also do your redeem settings. So default staff purchases, um, the kids' purchases are gonna be later or they're gonna be purchased now. I always did it on as now, and I would pull a report as to what the kids had purchased. So for editing your store, you're gonna create your categories first. So add a new category. Because I last taught younger kids, I did my categories based on how much the item cost. So um, 20 bucks, 30 bucks, 40 bucks. Um, if you, you know, are teaching the older kids, you might wanna do it like privileges, um, food items. Just, you can create your categories, whatever you want. So then once you add an item, you just hit the plus, name your item, pens, they're gonna cost 30 bucks. My ID is blank, my price is 30. Um, you can add a file. So I just went to Google, I found an image for a pen, saved it into my pictures. I don't know where it is, but um, and then and then hit um, because of my zoom and doing it on one screen, I can't click the button, but um, because of my toolbar, but just come down here, select your image, put it in there, and then it would uh, put, you know, it'll show it to the kids, your description, what you want your, you know, this is for one big pen, whatever. Show and list, meaning that the kids can see it, what grade levels are going to be able to purchase the item, all grade levels, or if you just teach a specific grade level that grade level, um, and then inventoried or not inventoried. Now my privileges, I did not inventory, but if it was a tangible item, I made sure that I inventoried it. The worst thing ever is coming in and having 50 pieces of bubble gum sold and you only have 10. So I always inventory my items. You can have it send a message to you when it gets below a certain amount, or you could put in there that it's currently sold out. So right now during pre-planning, you can go in and you can create your store, what you think you're going to have in your store, and just put it currently out of stock, and then the kids aren't able to purchase anything. Another thing that you can do is um, once your items are all created, the way that I kind of opened my store or closed my store was hit this show in list. If it's shown in the list, then the kids can buy it. And if it's not there, then my store is closed. So I open my store every other week, but you can do it whatever works for you. So now my store is closed and nobody can see it. Now I want to open my store and, um, and now it's, it's there. So when I went to the groups earlier, I was like, I thought I had stuff in here. That's why you couldn't see it because it, it was my store was closed. So now that my store is open, I am going to go back to the group feature to show you how you can check out multiple kids. So here you see it's shown in list so all my kids can shop. I'm going to go back to my group. I'm going to go to this test group one. And you see here I have two students. I go to menu. I go to my store. Now my items are visible. So if test student one and test student three wanted to purchase candy, I select both students, I come down here, I select the candy, and I hit checkout. 
Now, are they going to get their candy now? Or are they going to get their candy later? They're going to get it now, and it's 10 points. Well, neither one of these students have 10 points. So it's going to tell me these students are not eligible because they don't have enough points. So then I would remove the students because they can't purchase it. If they could purchase it, then their names are not going to be present there. Okay, so if they could purchase it, it would let me, but because they can't, it's not going to let me purchase it. Then I could go on and select, you know, these kids, here's some, these kids want a pencil, select the kids that want a pencil. If they have enough points, it'll let you check them out. If they don't have enough points, you're going to get that error to let you know they don't have enough points. So do I have any questions about creating your store? Okay. Now, the next thing is events and raffles. So if I wanted to create an event, I'm gonna to go to edit my events. And this is where you create an event. So there's three types of events. You can have a qualifying event, you can have a redeem event, and you can have a reward event. So the redeem means the kids are having to purchase it. So they're having to purchase the ability to participate in the event. The qualifying means the kids could not necessarily still have those points, but as long as they've earned those points, then they qualify to participate. The third type of event is a reward event where the kids are given the points. So I always did award reward events at the beginning of the year. And like when we had open house and we had curriculum nights and I would say, hey guys, if you come, or if you bring back your paper signed, you're going to get some Mustang bucks. So here I created one of those events. So I did a reward. Um, they're going to get Mustang bucks. They brought back signed papers. You'll get 20 Mustang bucks when you return signed papers from the first day of school by August 5th. So they're going to get 20 points for being responsible. It's unlimited to the number of students that can receive those 20 points. I'm going to hold the date, um, the event on August 8th. It's open to all grade levels and the kids can see it. And then I hit save. So now that is, is right here. Once I have finished it, then I can review and complete. Um, and I can see who has been given points when I complete that. Because I'll register those kids. As they bring in their papers, I'm going to register them for the event. So creating an event is super easy. You're just going to go to edit my events. You're going to create an event and you're going to pick what kind of event it is. A redeem, qualify, or reward. If you don't put in any of the things that are mandatory, you're going to get an error message. Hey, you didn't select a date for your event so that you can go back and fix it. So it's pretty simple. And then this calendar is new that they've done this year. So you'll see here, today's date, I don't have anything on there. But when I go to August, you'll see here that I have an event on August 8th. So it's just easier for you to have a visual of what events that you have. Um, that's a, a new feature that they've just added this year. Raffles is the same thing. Anytime you see the blue pencil, you can add it. You can click it and add things. So here I did an event called Mr. Good Bar and it's a qualifying based on the points that they've earned. Um, earned Mustang bucks from August 2nd to August 5th. So that first week of school, um, you have the opportunity to win a candy bar for meeting school-wide expectations. Good luck. I'm gonna hold the event on or the raffle on August 8th. It requires one Mustang buck. It's unlimited entries, and I have three candy bars. It's open to all grade levels. I'm going to show it in the list so the kids can see it and click save. So any event that you, that you um, any raffle is shown there. Also, like, hey, I found headphones really cheap at Walmart. Here, I'm going to do a headphone raffle. So um, you can just edit your prizes, change it up. You can duplicate it. Hey, I'm going to do a raffle every week on Friday. Um, you can duplicate it, change the dates in the event, and then just, you know, keep duplicating it and changing the event. So that makes it easier. You don't have to do everything all over again. You just change what needs to be changed. So that makes things a little bit easier. And it's the same thing. 
To do that, you go to your group. So here's my test group. I go down to my events. So here, brought back signed papers, test student one and test student two brought back their papers. They're both highlighted and I click this blue button to add the student. So now these two students are registered for that event. Once I close out the event, those kids will get those points. So it doesn't show up automatically, it'll show up when I close the event. Um, the next thing is check in, check out teachers. You can use this for tier two intervention. So if a student is assigned a check in, check out as an intervention for them for tier two, you'll see their name and as a teacher, they'll come to you. Some schools are utilizing this, some schools are not. The schools that have chosen to utilize it will do additional trainings for those schools. So I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail with that right now. Um, here is announcement. So if I wanted to send an email to somebody, if I wanted to send an announcement to a particular staff member, this is where I would go in to um, send them a message. So here is the new message, you know, your subject, just like email, but it's just instead of using the Outlook, it's utilizing PBIS rewards. Here is teacher rewards. Some schools are utilizing this platform and some are not. This is a way to acknowledge teachers. So it's just kind of like giving them shout outs and, you know, um, kudos. Thank you. You know, this was one that somebody created um, to the nurse. Thank you for coming and checking on me and my well-being. And um, some schools have set points. So if you get one of these shout outs, you'll then get points for receiving those shout outs. So like I said, some schools are utilizing that and some are not. Um, reports, this is what staff members can go to to see different reports. So you'll see like your daily Mustang buck usage, what acknowledgements were you giving out? So what expectation were you meeting, making good choices, being respectful, being responsible? So here I see that I acknowledge making good choices a lot. So maybe I need to acknowledge students being respectful or responsible. One of the things I want you to remember is you get what you pay attention to. So if you're paying attention to kids being respectful and the kids really know that you're paying attention to that, you're gonna see a lot more respectful behavior in your room. So really look at that and try to be consistent. I mean, of course, we're not all gonna have, you know, all of that being perfect across the board, but just, you know, look and make sure you're not utilizing more, one more than the other. And then here's some other reports that are available to um, staff. So like when I have my store open and I wanted to see what items were purchased, I can go to this items purchase report. Um, I can go to the redeem and approval queue. I can look at my store inventory. So there's different reports that staff members can utilize. The students tabs, just where you can enter in students, but all the students are automatically synced through class links. So you can see like their ID, you can upload their photo and you can authorize their app utilizing this too. You'll find on PBS Rewards that a lot of the, the tools that you can use, you can access them multiple ways. So here you, in groups, you can authorize, oh, I'll snap, there went my share. Um, you can authorize it on, um, Sorry, everyone. You can authorize it in the groups and give them an authorization code, or you can also authorize them um, utilizing the, the student feature. So there's lots of different ways that you can access them. All right, so does everybody see the Acknowledge a Student the homepage again? If somebody could give me a thumbs up or let me know in the chat that you can see it again. I have no idea what happened. But hopefully everyone sees the Acknowledge a Student now. All right, so. The, um, the student feature as a classroom teacher, I didn't utilize it very often, 
Um, one of the things that I thought was important to me was that my students have their photo in there. So I went and used my digital camera. I took everyone's picture and I just upload, saved it to my computer and I uploaded it into the app so that the students could see their actual picture. To me, that just makes it more personal than just having the PBIS rewards logo. So um, that was something that I did as a classroom teacher. So that was really my main um, when I utilized that student tab on the main menu. All right, so for the ID printing, what that is, is it gives you different templates that you can utilize to um, download the student's names and their QR code so that you could scan it. So for me, I had an address label for all of my kids that I um, printed so that they could put it on their desk and on their agenda. So that way, as I had my phone out, I could scan their QR code on their desk um, if the things that I posted around the room were not handy. So here you have their, um, their QR code that gives you lots of different Avery templates that you can utilize. So if I did this and I did first name, last name, make sure that you don't include the ID number. It is amazing how sneaky some of our kiddos can be and try to look on other kids' ID labels to get their ID number. All of their PBIS reward IDs numbers are their lunch number. So do not put that on anything that you post around the room because it is their lunch number and other kids can see it. So I just did their first name, last name, confirm the badge layout. What group do I want to print? I want to print, let's say I'm going to print um, Candace Cook's test group and then create the file to print. And it just creates a, a PDF that I could then print um, to put around my, um, on their desks. Family link. Now, so far, a lot of the schools that I've worked with are going to use Remind to message teachers, I mean, to message parents. But you can utilize PBIS rewards to message parents. Now, to me, it's a little bit harder to do this because you have to upload every parent into the program. So let's say that um, I want this parent connected to this student. I have to go in and add the parent, first name, last name, parent email. You don't have to put the phone number and then you have to connect them to a student. So first name, last name, the parent's email address and then connect them to the student and hit save. Then you're going to send, email that parent a letter. That letter has a QR code that is student specific. So then that parent gets the email, they open their phone, they download the app, it tells them what app to download, like it gives them all the information um, onto what app to download, then they scan the QR code. Once they scan the QR code and connect themselves to the student, then you can message the parent utilizing the app or the platform. But if they don't open the email and they don't sync to the kid, then it, it was kind of pointless because they have to do that part in order for you to be able to message them. However, if you're, you really want to use it and you tell your parents, hey, look, we're going to utilize this for parent communication, and, and really talk it up to your parents and have them download the app, then it, it works very, very well. You can also print the letters. So at Open House, if you want your letters printed, you just go up here to print letter. You can print single students, you can print grade levels, or you can print just a group. So let's say that I want my homeroom to have their letter. And I am Michelle Brown. So I click up here, Michelle Brown. Um, I'm doing my whole homeroom. Hit create file to print. I want it in English. It does print the letter in Spanish if you select that. And you'll see here it created a PDF that I could then print and give each student a letter. 
So each letter is student specific. So you've got to make sure that you're giving, you know, Chris Brown his letter so that his parents can connect because it's not a generic QR code, it's student specific. So you gotta make sure of that. Then the parents can download the app. When the parents download the app, they can see what points the students have received. They can see what teacher acknowledged them. They can see what expectation they got acknowledged for. They can see what items the, um, the student has purchased in the market. They can see any raffles they've signed up for. They can see all of the teachers that are connected through ClassLink, and then they can message the teachers utilizing their app that way. And then here are authorization codes. So I use authorization codes the most for um, signing in staff members. So here, if um, I download the app, there's three different apps that you can download. And it's really hard to show that on Zoom and, and I apologize in advance. There's three different apps to download. There's the staff app. You know it's the staff app because this icon right here is the icon on the app. It has no white on it. The parent app has um, this same bar, upside down bar graph. And it has an outline of, a, it's a white image and it has like a clip art person holding onto a clip art student's hand. That's the parent one, or now they call it the family portal, I believe. And then there's also the student one, which has a white graduation cap. So right here in the corner, it'll be a white graduation cap. So as a staff member, make sure you download the correct app. So once you go to the app, you can authorize yourself. So you download the app using either Google or um, Google Play or the Apple Store. You can also use it on Kindles. You can use it on old phones as long as they'll connect to Wi-Fi. If you don't want to download it on the phone that you currently use for, for everything, you can use old electronic devices. You can download it on iPads. You can download it on, on all those different platforms. So once you've downloaded it, you have to authenticate it or authorize it. The easiest way to authorize it is to come down here on your platform, on your desktop, and hit staff, hit the green plus, and I want to generate a code for myself. So generate code. Now, this will only work for teacher training. It won't work for anybody else, so don't try to use it. On your app, when you open your app on your phone, it's going to say, you know, you can put in like your email, your password, your school code, or you can just click, I have an authorization code. You click that button and it's going to allow you to put this nine digit code in. Once you put that nine digit code in that you've generated for yourself, then it's going to allow you to use your app. Once you've used your app, it Unless you sign out physically on the app, it's gonna, it's gonna stay logged in. So you, I've authorized myself at the beginning of the year and it has gone all year long that I never had to authorize myself again. So if you wanna utilize an electronic device to acknowledge students, that's the easiest way to do it is that authorization code. So um, that is that last one on the barcode. So remember, click help if you need any tutorials for the program. You can always reach me. I'm extension 1301 at the board office, or you can email me harris.jessica at newton.k12.ga.us. And I can come out during teacher's plannings um, or any other times to provide um, one-on-one -on -one support if you're having a hard time utilizing the PBIS Rewards platform.